Okay. So you, you just kind of, you know, all right, trust no one, Mr. Mulder, but sometimes it gets the better of you. And uh, then somebody pointed this out, is that by default, you can change the outlier elimination. So I could have had that look as well is that basically you can chop off the top 1% of outliers. Now, if you think about it, you're chopping the highest latency off. And that was all of our problem. This, was, this is why there was a tenfold performance degradation. And the customer might not have met their regulatory requirements. Because for weeks, the outliers had been eliminated. I, was like, I don't bloody believe it. And so you know, great. So I click, you can just click it again. Well, I think, <coughs> does that now then get rid of all the outliers? That's 0 0.1. No, that's not good enough. Right, uh, I think we've got rid of it now. So currently none. Oh, yeah, we see one second outliers then. So why did people? Why did some clearly very, very clever people do this to me? Personally, I do not understand. But that was probably... Uh, you, we kind of need to think about some of this stuff. Is, do we trust to the tools? And it, it's kind of great for everything other than latency, I guess. You don't want to be shaving off the important ones. If you look at latency, it's not the fast ones you want, it's the slow ones. Oh, no. So, um, has anyone here got a um, uh, ZFS appliance, Amber Road? Um, they have improved a, a huge amount in terms of, I think that was a product that was early to market. And uh, the number that are used in the uh, Oracle data center in, uh, in Austin, uh, I think that they are the biggest customer there they have used for hosting various services the customer and uh, very high uptime requirements and they are uh, from being a problem child they are now um, very significant uh, you know significant quality improvement uh, not that they're not what they were three or four years ago uh, but that's just uh, an example and the analytics on these is, is really good um, you know, that demo get Jared so how many people have seen a demo of this yeah, it is really, really good, and you know, hopefully down the line will be available for the rest of Solaris. But um, that's just sort of one nip that led to you know, an extended. It's, not, it's trusting that. Ah. Righty oh. So anyway, that's that. Um, so I just, I have. A little bit of a workload going on here. Um, ooh, can anyone see that? I doubt it. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. Uh, okay, so we've basically got a MUC file and a bunch of CPs, and that's just uh, on a mount. So we're just copying off, off, off the mount on the, uh, on the uh, appliance. So it's just to generate some, some network load. So just a couple of things that I want to kind of go through. So... How many people have come across PGSTAT as a tool? Oh. Well, I haven't either until about four months ago. Uh, it feels like four months. Uh, but basically, uh, it allows you to look at, and there's a lot of stuff on this machine, uh, to look at uh, how busy the various, you know, now we have multi, well, multi-core, um, machines uh, with basically multiple executing threads. So this is an M9000. So we can see here, if we just take any one of them, uh, for one socket, we can see how busy the cache is, uh, how busy that socket is overall, and then we can look at the pipeline. If there's a separate, if we had something like a T-series where there's a separate floating point unit, PG stat will tell you how busy that floating point mm -hmm. unit so that it, it kind of solves some of the how, oh, okay, you can tell me this stuff with MP stat, but let's actually have a look at um, how busy some of this stuff is. 
Uh, so we can see here that we're uh, sort of 44 percent utilizing this pipeline but from socket that's kind of what MP stat might report uh, where um, that's how utilized we are uh, so that's really useful I, I found that um, valuable a couple of times it's uh, from update 9 onwards um, <coughs> So that's quite useful. May I ask, what are your thoughts on Intel's hyper-threading? Um, I don't have any really. Um, it, one of the things I, I guess about what I do is, you, it, is, it, is there's big bits of the product line that I just haven't had to go and work on because that, Whatever I've been pointed at, the customer I've been pointed at hasn't had an issue. So it's not something I, I can really feel comment on. Um, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, DL stat. This is quite good. It's kind of replacing net stat uh, minus I in a way. Um, and we can see here that uh, we're actually starting to get out. Uh, sort of by the nick, yeah, the, the nicks were busy, we show those. But when we start to go, because uh, we have the crossbow where we'll uh, either handle the interrupt or we may pull depending on, on, the, on the rate, whichever is more appropriate, uh, we'll, we can look at how often it's polling uh, and this may actually give us some insight into how the uh, network infrastructure is behaving and also the all important, are we dropping packets as they're coming in? Uh, or is the NIC aware it's dropping packets? And that, so there's both a, a receive side uh, and a, on a transmit side. So uh, here we have, oh, it doesn't produce for everyone. Um, so the packets, bytes, and uh, numbers of drops. That, that's quite, um, quite useful. Quite. Um, So a few people complaining about um, your net zero is how, oh, you used to have IF config. Yeah, I used to have to read the demand page for IF config quite a lot to do anything non-trivial. If it wasn't IF config minus A, I would read the demand page. Um, but now with the uh, explosion in complexity of networks and being able to virtualize them and have virtual switches inside the machine, all that stuff, um, the tools have kind of gone beyond what I have con the multi-purpose or singing or dancing I, I have con can cope with. Oh dear. <laughs> they gave me this laptop. Mm. Anyway, um, I'm using Windows a bit of a trial by fire to be honest. Quite simple. After 15 years of no lies. Good. So th this is quite a good um, sort of summary of, of the configuration, sort of IP configuration, and got forwarded and enabled, uh, and it's quite a good uh, check, uh, a summary to sort of check a bit, as a sanity check, you're kind of doing static co checking, config checking, it's quite a useful um, place to start. Uh, right, well, I will only show you, uh, oh. No, I can't type NFS. Stat minus M. So, I can get, give you a, a, a sort of summary of uh, how NFS is set up. Um, so, at the bottom, we have the, we're using, I think, it's a one meg buffers uh, for read and write. Uh, so, that's quite useful. If you want to actually see what's going on, on the client, we get a whole bunch of stuff here. So I was talking about the delegations. So um, I think we've done 73 delegations uh, so far. But as an overall, it's 0%. It's, it's and this sort of number of writes, sort of of the total, uh, most of it has been put 500, which is basically a, um, being a, read, a, a read. Actually, we may be cached, so we may be doing no reads. So most of them here are right. But this is good, a, a, a good, most of them are fairly intuitive. 
as to what they're doing apart from the put file handle and um, uh, stuff. But that's quite a good place to get um, to see if there's anything untoward going on in terms of uh, NFS activity. Uh, and then you always get things like this. I don't have a clue what that does, but uh, uh, you typically need to have gone have a look at the source to uh, work that one out. Spot my interest. I've not noticed that before. Um, yesterday I did a kind of I think I came across PowerTop and I thought, oh, is there anything else that's new in user bin? And I came across latency top. And I kind of sat there and thought, well, what would I actually use it for? But anyway, it's there, and I'm not sure what it tells me um, other than why we're waiting. And it then told me that one of the system I was looking at, uh, we were looking at the ZFS ZIL, um, we were waiting there, okay, that seems reasonable. And then it says that a large portion of the weights came from nano sleep. That's kind of what I would expect, sleeping. Um, but uh, I'd not noticed it before, um, so it might be worth a play, might fit your, fit your purpose. And uh, I am really, really pleased today because I managed to. Um, hey. Hey, uh, Mr. Harmon there, uh, I managed to. Come up with something he didn't know about. So, if Harman doesn't know, so um, there is only one. There was until today. In fact, it actually two years ago. There was only one value to use for I/O stat, which was the value of one. Yeah. Uh, so that would give you one second increment, and you'd be able to see uh, without all this horrible averaging uh, what was going on. Uh, however, your life may be changed by this. You can actually have kind of average, a sub one second I/O stats. <coughs> My first integration when I joined engineering. Um, so this is this will be a hundredth of a second. So in effect. It, this is ZFS, so, not it, this is it, this is it. Uh, so what's happening is that, no, no actually it's NFS. Uh, there's kind of a splurge over that second. Uh, it's too short an interval, but it might in certain circumstances give you an insight uh, where you have, where you're look, trying to track down um, high latency IOs. Um, so that's that one. So I was talking about uh, so I would hope that this is a um, reasonably healthy network if not it's his fault <laughs> uh, but here we do see um, some retransmissions now given how many in order bytes we've got uh, but again, this is part of the part of the NFS. If we start, I, mean, I don't know if the previous one had many. These are the sorts of things we'd, we'd start to look at. Are they persistent or is this a one-off? Is it a significant number? What percentage of the overall uh, transmissions? Uh, so if we're having to retransmit uh, and it's the same packet ma many times, then that can hold up other parts of NFS. So it can be really significant. Um, and from this we wouldn't really get any idea of, of where that packet, uh, those five packets are getting dropped. It could be the NIC. This isn't a particularly quick NIC on this machine, it's only sort of one gig. Uh, but if we were looking for duplicates, that tends to suggest some retransmission by the server side. Uh, if they're dropped, that would well be the switch. Uh, so this is a, a really good place to start to say, well, okay, are there things like retransmission and drop? Are they regularly incrementing? And you can get all this stuff out of the appropriate case stat as well. Um, right here, or what was that command, sorry? Net stat minus S minus capital P TCP 1. And, uh, 
and then just sort of add it 